Hello and welcome to Side Hustle, the show that highlights student entrepreneurs striving to strike a balance between their business and their schoolwork. And this week, I definitely have an amazing show lined up for you. Agre Aguata, a student at the Kenyatta University, is an artist, a rapper, as well as a poet. I studied art uh, in KU, that's where I got the passion and um, I got to study forms and to study how to apply my skills in a professional way. But I've always been doing art. Agwe believes art is the best way he can express himself. He communicates through his art. It's the best way I express myself because generally people do say an image has a thousand words and they live that experience. So I say a lot through my artworks. So it gives me more space to express myself. Art has been a part of him since he was a little boy playing with clay. As long as I remember, uh, because I grew up doing art, I grew up playing with clay, I grew up uh, drawing and all that, so my parents really encouraged me. And uh, all through my academic life, I've studied art in primary, high school, and in Kenyatta University. All along, it's studying art and learning from people. So every day to me is art. I have to study art. He was so certain from a young age that he would definitely be an artist. When I was a young kid, when we were asked, what do you want to become when you grow up? Others used to say a doctor, a pilot, all those things. But I, I specifically remember saying I want to be a person who draws because I didn't even know what an artist is. So I believed I'd keep doing this thing. So I just followed the flow. He also has people that he looks up to in art. As I kept growing, I started learning other artists what they do. I learned of people like Patrick Mukabi, I learned of people like Mary Ogimbo and Kana Ongesa, and all those people who have made it in art. So then my curiosity really went up. I really wanted to know what they do. I have so many people that I look up to that are artists that have really supported me in the world of art. I have people like Anne Mwiti, who is a lecturer, uh, and she's a practicing artist. Uh, I have people like Lydia Galav who is a curator at the museum. They've really shown me a lot and encouraged me to keep going. Agri tells us his starting point was the moment he picked up the medium and started expressing himself, driven by passion. I can say my starting point as an artist is when I, I just picked the medium and started expressing myself because I had to do it. I had to show something that is, it's an energy in me that I have to expel. So by choosing a medium and communicating, first it was all for passion. I didn't have to sell anything, just communicate, you know, make beautiful things. As they say, the aesthetic aspect of art, that's where I started. Then now the, the economic part just came in when people told me, you know, I like this, I want to have it. I can give you money. I didn't like selling my first artwork, but as I kept growing, I realized I have to sell. Art has been able to bring income for him, and it's now a rewarding passion. There are people I know who have made millions from art. They're, but you know, you don't just start getting money from art. Don't get into it if you are there for the money. It doesn't work like that. No, you have to really have passion for art. The money will come in later. And it's, it's a long way, you have to really struggle and keep focused in the game. The concept of his artwork is inspired even before the artwork. Most of them, the concept uh, comes before the actual artwork. Uh, there are various types. Some of them are spontaneous creations, where I just create from the top of my mind. I look at a blank canvas and they just apply color. As I keep going, I keep developing it into something. But there are some that are very objective because I'm working towards a specific uh, subject 
Like for example, when I'm doing a portrait, I have to uh, work towards that specific objective. His artworks have different prizes, but some are priceless. There are some artworks that even if I was to be given one million things, I can't take it. Okay. And there are some, uh, because of the sentimental value attached to it, but there are some that as low as 10,000 shillings I can part with mm -hmm. the specific artwork. Okay. But that's too low though. I don't, like, I don't encourage 10,000 shillings or 15. Mm -hmm. He has been able to be part of group exhibitions at the National Museum, among other places. I've done several group exhibitions. I've exhibited um, at the National Museum. Uh, the first conceptual art exhibition in East Africa was part of it. Okay. Yeah, and I've exhibited in various other places. Agwe believes that the art industry is not where it was yesterday. There definitely is progress. It has been a long journey, especially in Kenya, for Kenyans to appreciate art. But where we are is not where we were a few years ago. Yeah, it's not where we were five years ago. Uh, right now, people really do appreciate. The appreciation is going up. The other day I had there was an auction at uh, Circle Art where art sold at a total of 20 something million shillings in one auction. You know, that's in Nairobi. Yeah. So if such things keep happening, then the appreciation is really going up. He tells us that he believes the future of art is bright because art is what you see. There's so much you have to say in it. Um, I remember when, when I was in high school, my teacher who used to be called Mr. Kala, he used to uh, tell me art is the way you see. So he used to really take time to explain to me to understand the concept and what art takes, what it takes to be an artist. So now that I'm doing it uh, as an artist, I really see why it was difficult for him to make me see the clear picture because the future is bright, yes, but how bright or what aspect would we mean the future is bright? I see Kenyans participating in uh, exhibitions outside the country, uh, so exhibitions in South Africa, exhibitions in Nigeria, and collaborating with other artists on the continent and outside, in the continent I mean, and outside, yeah, so that the market becomes bigger. He tells us art is wide, and he started as a sculpture. I'm an all-round, that's what I feel, because I actually started as a sculptor. I didn't start as a painter. So I started with sculptures, making sculptures, clay and all that. Uh, and I do poetry. Yes, I'm a poet, I do rap. He tells us that the period it takes to come up with an artwork varies depending on what is being worked on. Uh, sometimes the process, the inception process or uh, the brooding of the idea may take longer than the actual actualization of the idea. But there are some that I take uh, maybe four hours to think about what I'm going to do. Then I work for like six hours. Yeah? But between uh, three hours, that's the fastest while working, three hours to maybe ten. I can even take one week doing one portrait sometimes, or one composition, depending on what I'm working on. Agri believes we are all born artists, but remaining artists is the challenge. Uh, this is a quote from a very famous artist. We are born artists, but now remaining an artist all through our life is the challenge. Okay. Because when we were young, we used to create. Every child loves to create. But then remaining in that state is the challenge because the world is trying to change you constantly. Because people will come offering you other opportunities that you see money, you see you know, other things that are maybe easier or all that. Art is not easy, it's work. That's why we say art work. When it comes to challenges he has been able to face, people appreciating and understanding what you do has been a big challenge for artists as well as the fluctuation in the nature of the market. Everything, of course, has challenges. Um, but then uh, for art, 
um, and the young artists what uh, they really face is people getting to understand what you're doing, uh, sometimes appreciation, monetary appreciation is another thing, and the fluctuation of the market, the nature of the market. We'll get some time, maybe people will purchase a lot of artwork, some will take three pieces, some, some will take two pieces, and you find that's within one month, and people have taken uh, maybe 10 pieces, then you will have to wait for even two years, you know, without selling a single piece. Sometimes when you're lucky, you sell one piece, then you wait for another long time. So it's really, uh, uh, the, the market is not very predictable. But for an artist, that should be taken as a challenge. That's where an artist really needs to find a way of surviving. You don't need to die as an artist to wait and, you know, sell art. Agri definitely has a word for young people like him with talent. I'll encourage them to keep working, that's one thing. And the next thing is never stop doing art. Never ever stop doing art, no matter what happens. Because the more you, you are not practicing, you are losing. Yeah? Then uh, they should learn uh, the environment, they should learn uh, the market, try and interact with other artists, because artists are not that many in Kenya. So try and know, they should try and know what are the other artists doing, where do they exhibit their work, what are, what are they doing, you know, which is making a difference in their life, and try to attend uh, exhibitions, yeah, what, uh, shows, and at least put them, uh, their art out there so that somebody can know it. My mom once told me, no matter what you're doing, even if you're dancing, no matter what you're doing, Make sure you do it your best. It's just simple, you know. Whatever I'm doing, even if I'm doing a portrait, even if I'm doing a landscape, I do it my best. My work is available online. I'm on Facebook. I'm on uh, Facebook as Agri Aguata or Scam Sunny. I'm on Instagram as Kamsani. I'm on Twitter, yes. And uh, if you get me on social media, you'll get my contacts. If you get me, if I'm exhibiting, uh, somebody can attend the shows. If somebody gets to the museum and asks, uh, is there a person called Agri Agwata? Do they have their work here? You know, ask the curators or something like that. Definitely you'll get to me. Let's have a look at what we have for you today on our Opportunity segment. all we had for you today but if you missed the show be sure to catch it on our youtube channel at fanaka digital you can also be in touch with us on all our social media platforms at fanaka digital keep in touch with us always at fanaka tv where we are strictly business